Hey guys, welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday. I hope everyone out there is keeping safe and well. For those of you who can still golf right now, fantastic. For those of you who aren't fortunate enough to, I hope everyone is staying golf to mystic. Now this week I've got a guest on here that I'm sure is doing something for TaylorMade that when we all get back to playing golf, we'll all want to see. Last week when I posted, we talked about the responsibility of going for a fitting as a player. This week, I'm joined by Dan Morris, who works for TaylorMade Europe, and he trains a lot of the PGA professionals out there to fit you for your game. And he also trains a lot of the people who work for TaylorMade so that they can create the perfect experiential and fitting environment. So without further ado, Dan, welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday. How are you doing? Thanks, Trotsky. Thanks for having me. Now tell me, experiential rep for TaylorMade, exactly what does that entail? Because we're all looking forward to getting back to playing. So when we do, when we come and visit you or your teams, what will that entail? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, the parts of the roles have changed during the year. You know, maybe in the closed season, was it in Europe, we'll do a lot of uh, planning and, and, and the training aspect for products. But, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of the day-to-day -day job is, is getting our products in, into golfers' hands, you know, daily. You know, we could be setting up our fit and experiential events you know, across Europe, a number of the teams uh, across the continent, you know, to help our, our, our accounts, you know, and ultimately help golfers improve their game. You know, we could be seeing between us, you know, eight to 10 golfers a day, um, you know, ultimately to, to, to get better performance than what they've currently got in their bag. And that entails club fitting. So how important do you think club fitting is to the amateur and how close can you guys get to what TaylorMade offers on tour? The, the, the club fitting side is is crucial. You know, I, I think we, we, we've seen that for, from us working within, within the ropes of, of the business in the last three, four, five years, um, you know, probably since the, the, the first launch of M1 where we really started to, to really see the inflow of all these different uh, shaft offerings that we were able to offer as a, as a company to, to really get closer to maybe what you do at a tour level. You know, we know you and on, on the Asian tours and, and the European tours, and, you know, all the global tours, you know, that they'll have this, this truck following them around, which is an inc incredible unit to, to, to have all these different shafts uh, of, of a masonry to be able to fit the, these best guys in the world you know what we do day to day you know is, is only grown exponentially in, in what we can offer you know say but from, from that launch of M1 we started to see you know 25 30 different shaft offerings to be able to help and dial these golfers in you know using that as an example say uh, for, a, for a drive fitting you know years gone by maybe that wasn't the case you know maybe we only had you know two three four shafts maybe um be able to offer but you know the amount of options that we have now it's it's key to be able to dial that golf in from the right head the right shaft the right length you know it's it, it's massive you know for, for, for us it, it, in experiential globally it's to give the the golfer as close as an experience to, to what you guys are fitting with your Dustin Johnson's Tiger Woods to give them that tour level experience you know it, it's massive and when people go into this environment, obviously they are somewhat intimidated, right? How do you and the teams get these people to relax? Because, you know, obviously we as a brand at the forefront, we are the tour and you can see that we're the tour and now we're offering the service to the consumer. But how do you get these people to relax so that when they know they come, they're getting the most out of this? Yeah, I mean, it's it's probably one of the biggest hurdles that we have to overcome as as the fitter, you know, day to day. Because, you know, I, I would say to, to to our guys, you know, you've got that that Disneyland experience. You know, for, for all we know, the, the the lady or the gen golfer that's coming for for that indiv individual fitting, we don't know. They've been they may be not taking a holiday this year, or they may be not. Um, you know, they've saved the last three, four months to be able to this new driver or a new set of clubs. So we've got to give them that level of experience it to be able to take that away. So they could be a little bit nervous of, of, of that situation. They've got the track man or, or the quad sitting behind them. They, they've got us as the fitter. They've maybe got their PGA Pro from the golf club standing there as well. So, you know, it is a bit an intimidating situation. So for, for me as the fitter, you know, that, that's when the fitting starts. You know, that's a crucial part of my job. So I'll be asking the golfer 
questions while they're warming up, not necessarily directly about, you know, the fitting um, as, as we started, but I'm, I'm, I'm eating as much information from the golfer, even when they're warming up. So trying to get an idea of what they see as their golf day to day, you know, they're losing it to the right, losing it to the left. What do they want? How do they fit in? But in that scenario, trying to relax them, you know, it's the same with, you know, guys going for a lesson for the first time with the, with the PGA Pro at the golf club. It's probably quite nervous, probably quite intimidating. But they go to see him week in, week out. As it, there's an element of trust and, 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 and they start to get relaxed. So for me, and maybe a half an hour appointment, it's key to, to get the golfer as relaxed and, and enjoy it. You know, they're there to enjoy it as, as, as well as get good results from it. Now, when we're with Dustin Johnson or we're with John Rahm, we are guided a lot by the player into the choice of golf shaft that they may have. So, you know, the heads each year, that's part of the fun. You're trying to calculate which head is good with which shaft combination. But a player of that level often comes with a preconceived idea. When someone comes to you with no or no would be unfair, but with limited understanding about what is out there. Because as you quite rightly say, they might not have the opportunity to research it or they have a busy life. How do they know that, because they can't be expected to hit all 50 or 100 shaft combinations that you have, how do they know that they're getting the right shaft for their game? What process do you guys go through? Is there a monitor, a launch monitor that you use? Yeah, I mean, for, for, for us in Europe, you know, we, we've had a, an unbelievable investment in our experiential team across Europe. So, so we have a mixture of uh, trackmans and GC quads in the team. Everybody has one of them, two launch monitors. Um, you know, so to be able to, to, to use that to speed up the process and not slow it down, which is something that I see for maybe some fitters out there that maybe get too too involved in some of the numbers that maybe they don't need to look at because we don't want to confuse the golfer. You know, there's maybe some key factors that we want to see able to use that as an advantage, which can then maybe easily explain to the golfer of why we're making that choice. You know, in terms of somebody having a, a prerequisite of, of what they want, you, I, I guess you can work that out within five, ten minutes of maybe what level of golfer that, that, that they're at, maybe what the setup of the golf bag is. You know, they may be having a driver that's sitting three degrees open, but they don't know that and they're hitting a massive slice. So I'm already starting to build the fit without even getting them into a current product. So I think that's key for, you know, building trust as well. You know, if they trust me uh, of maybe why I'm giving them, but it's explaining to them why I'm doing that, I think that's, that, that brings the story together. And when someone comes to you, what's the biggest bugbear? Obviously, you're trying to do your job and you're trying to get these people into a product, but what's the hardest thing and the biggest mistake that the amateur golfer makes when they come to you for this experience? Um, as, as the fitter doing the daily job, the biggest bugbear for us, which, which slows us down and maybe slows us getting the golfer into better products, is, is when they don't have their current gamer. Because... You know, especially in the UK, maybe sometimes at these events that we go to, we're not blessed with premium golf balls to be able to, to, to do the fit, and that's a hurdle that we have to overcome. So how do you get around that? Because that's a key feature. Obviously, the golf ball is key in performance, so how do you guys get around that on a boots-on-the-ground level? Yeah, if we're indoors and it's a studio that we're using, say, a quad, or you know, that, that, that becomes a little easier. Uh, because we're getting live data and it's obviously calculating the numbers. If we're using, you know, a range ball that's potentially a limited distance golf ball, or there's, you know, there's not many dimples on it, uh, you know, at time because it's been in the washer that many times. With something that we will be dealt with, you know, during the year at certain times. Again, that's where a little bit of trust comes in between the fitter and the golfer. And, and again, you know, with Chapman, they've got the ability to change the setting on the golf ball to get, you know, a realistic theme of what that golf, golf ball is going to do once they won't have their gamer or their premium golf ball in their hand. So it's really key to, for the golfer to, to have their current gamer because, you know, if I'm using a limited distance golf ball on a range and the golfer doesn't have their current gamer driver and I'll say, well, you know, you're hitting it 250 metres or 250 yards and they go, well, 
I usually hit it 280 yards, 280 meters. We're, we're, we're off to a non-starter because yes. they don't the believe point. what I'm saying. They don't believe what the monitor's saying. So it, it's key for us for the golfer to have a good game. You know, I, and, and that's, you know, where our challenging part of the job, you know, comes in because if they're hitting their current game with, well and, and the performance is good we've got to work that little bit extra harder to, to get that maximum performance out of the new product that's a good point and then in the current day and in in looking at 2000 i got two final questions for you 2000 and prior to 2020's product what was the standout club or ball or accessory and then today in today's lineup what is what's going really well before we approach the situation we're in now, but to start the year, what was off to a great start? What was a good product? In, in the in 2020 lineup, I, yeah, the the, the drive the, the drivers are exceptional, you know, but by by far the the, the best lineup of drivers that, that that I've worked with, no doubt. And why is that? Why why are you why are they so good this year for you? That we're, we're seeing speed, massive amount of speed, you know, that speed coming through, through the, the technology in the head. So we're seeing club speed, but it's being backed up by ball speed. So the efficiency is up, you know, the pound for pound versus the current game. Up, we, you know, everything's up, club speed, ball speed, you know, we're seeing massive amount of distance, but it's the forgiveness element to it as well. You know, all, all three drivers that are in the range, the, you know, the Sim, the Max and the Max D, the, the three different drivers for, for, for three different performance of maybe what we're looking for. You know, the sim driver, you know, we, we talk about is the, is the lowest spinning option of the three. What I've been able to see this year is sometimes giving the golfer a little bit more luck, which is going to play a little bit more forgiving for them because it's, it, it's going to have that slightly lower spin rate off the head. So we're getting some, you know, great MOI, you know, loads of forgiveness with that sim driver. You know, and ultimately, distance and ball speed and numbers is is in abundance. I'd say that for us in Europe as well this year, you know, it's something that I, I think sometimes gets overlooked as, as a product is is the D is the D driver the, the Sim Max D. You know, I done some big figures for our uh, experiential events in February for a number of the teams last week and. Out, out of the custom fitted drivers that, that, that we done, we were around 40% of, of the max D. Now, I think sometimes in the industry that D model gets gets overlooked. You know, feedback for us, you know, one thing that I've gone to our, our PGA Pro accounts um, and, and feedback from, from tour level was, you know, speaking to yourself and speaking to some of the tour guys, you know, like Sam Day on, on the European team, you know, that Sim Max D drive is getting into the hand of our elite players. Do you know that Keegan Bradley you know, played elite. it? Keegan Bradley played it at the start of the year. Yeah, major winner. You know, a couple of years ago, if you said a, 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 a tour level or, a, or a, a major winner using a D model, you know, probably would have been out of the question. But because it's, it's, got, a, it's got a deeper head, it, it's a larger face, it's 18% larger than, than the Sim driver. It's got so much forgiveness, and if you know, even though it's a D type, you know, don't let that um, shy away from from you. If you do get the left, you know, we've got the ability to open that up to sit it open. If that looks nicer to the player and it gives them that little bit more forgiveness, don't look any of these drivers. You know, with your fitters, get yourself dialed in into into one of the three, three drivers. You know, last last year I'd say for 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 from for my current driver, last year I was in M five. Love the look. I was thinking Sim is, is going to be the one for me. As soon as I got that Sim Max in my hand, the, you know, the, 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 the jumping performance was, was so much noticeable compared to, to the M5 because my miss hits weren't being too low spin. It wasn't dropping out the sky. You know, there, there is a driver for, for each golfer out there, definitely. Interesting thoughts. Interesting thoughts. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to answer some of these questions, pal, I know with the time change, it's getting pretty late there. So I'll let you go. But thank you very much for joining. Uh, massively appreciated. And guys, I mean, there you have it. Fitting, it's crucial when it comes to your game. It's crucial when it comes to your responsibilities. I think to summarize that, take your gamer. That was the key thing that came away from me. Gamer is a term that we use in the industry for what driver you're currently playing. Take it to your fitting. 
If you want more of this, leave a comment below. Let me know what subjects you want me to cover. I'm happy to do it. You can find more of this on Instagram, at Trotty Golf. Obviously, subscribe, stay in touch here, and stay golf to mystic, guys. We're all looking forward to getting back out there. I know Danny's looking forward to getting back out there on his experiential circuit and getting you guys fit into the right products. So until then, stay safe and uh, stay golf to mystic, like I say. Cheers, guys. <laughs>